Most recipes for oven fries are downright terrible. And they turn out a little something like this. They're mostly pale, except on the ends where they're incredibly tough and burned. They're very flabby. And on the inside, they're just really mealy and starchy. So today we're gonna solve the oven fry problem once and for all, because Lon's here. And she cooked over 10 pounds of potatoes every day for over three weeks in order to get it just right. And by my estimation, that's a lot of potatoes. Sure is, and most of them pretty bad. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yes. But we're not gonna do that today. We figured out how to make them taste great, have that perfect texture, and be nice and fluffy on the inside mm, as well. Tall order. Yes. We're going to start with the flavor. So the key to French fry flavor is to get the oil to oxidize slightly. That's what happens when you fry. Since we're not frying in the oven, we have to find a way around that. Mm -hmm. I'm starting with baking spray, and I'm just gonna coat this pan generously. And then for the oil flavor, I have three tablespoons of vegetable oil. Okay, so baking spray, then vegetable oil is the key. Right, what we're doing here isn't just preventing the fries from sticking. The cooking spray is gonna help the vegetable oil stay spread out across the surface of the pan, and that's how we ensure that every fry has just that right amount of flavor. Wow, because that's not a lot of oil. No, no, you see a lot of recipes that call for a third to a half a cup of oil, and you end up with kind of greasy fries, mm -hmm. and sometimes a smoking oven, and that was <laughs> not good. I've done that. So now I'm just tilting the pan to make sure it's evenly distributed. So the reason we coated that baking sheet with cooking spray before adding the vegetable oil is because it allows us to use less oil overall. Well, how does that work? Well, it comes down to the lecithin in the baking spray. See, lecithin is a special molecule. It has two sides, one side that's generally sticky and the other side that's attracted to oil. So when you spray it on the baking sheet, the sticky side sticks to the metal. The side that likes the oil is facing up. So when you pour the oil on top of it, it disperses evenly over the baking sheet, making a nice thin layer. So we can get away with using just three tablespoons. Oh, that looks great. Okay, next up, the fries. I have Yukon Gold potatoes here. Mm -hmm. And we're using Yukons because they have a nice thin skin and we don't have to peel them. So I'm just gonna cut them first in half lengthwise. All right, so you went through the thin part of the potato. Yes, that just means we'll get more fries per potato. And I'm trimming a tiny sliver off the long side of each half. Instead of cutting the traditional wedge shape or even the matchstick, we're gonna go with planks. That ensures two flat sides for nice browning and crispiness, and we don't have to flip them as often. Ah, very clever. That's it, this is two pounds of Yukon Golds. Okay. Next, if I were to take those potatoes and just dump them on this sheet pan, pop them in the oven, they're not gonna crisp up. I've done that, it doesn't work. No. <laughs> <laughs> what we can do is put something on the outside that we know will crisp up, and that ingredient is cornstarch. I've got three tablespoons here, and instead of just sprinkling this on the potatoes, which will make the fries end up being a little dusty, we're gonna mix it with some water, three quarters of a cup, but you can't put the potatoes in this either. No, that looks pretty watery. Yeah, nothing's gonna stick. <laughs> what we're gonna do is pop this in the microwave. That's gonna cook the cornstarch just a little bit. We'll end up with something that's a little pudding-like, but it'll be thick enough to coat the planks really nicely. It's gonna take anywhere between one to three minutes, and I'll be stirring every 20 seconds. So here we go. <laughs> it really transforms with those few minutes in the microwave. Yeah, so it's pretty warm, but not too thick, not too thin. If you do overdo it a little bit, you can just add a couple tablespoons of water, maybe a little at a time, whisk it in, thin it out slightly. It brings it right back. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna add these potatoes. <laughs> Plunk. Right, and I like to get in there with my hands. It's a little hard to get them to separate sometimes mm -hmm. if you're using a spatula. So what I'm looking for here is to make sure the potatoes are each lightly coated with this goo. <laughs> Once they are, we're gonna transfer them to the baking sheet. So Lana, I gotta tell you, this looks really weird. Feels really weird too. <laughs> and I got some weird looks in the kitchen when I was doing this, but it's totally worth it. All right. So these look great. <laughs> They look right. I'm trusting you at this they, point. They look right. There's just a thin coating on here. Let's get them on the baking sheet. All right. I just want to make sure there's a tiny bit of space in between each plank so that they're not touching each other or getting glued to each other. Yeah, they're actually pretty well spread out on that baking sheet. Yeah, I found that if you crowd the baking sheet, they don't brown as quickly and it's not as satisfying. Okay, so one last thing to do. We're gonna cover these guys with aluminum foil. This has been greased. We're covering them so that they steam in the oven. That'll take about 12 minutes in a 425 degree oven, the very lowest rack of the oven. And then I'll remove that foil and let them brown on the first side and that'll take anywhere between 10 to 18 minutes. 
Ooh, they smell like fries. They look like fries, or they will when I flip them. <laughs> right, <laughs> the cornstarch coating has mostly disappeared, which is great, and I'm just gonna flip these over. Hoo hoo hoo! I was not expecting them to look like that when she flipped them over. And all of that with just three tablespoons of oil. That's a real feat. Yes, this looks great. This is ideal. The center ones are usually less brown. They'll darken a tiny bit in the oven as they continue to brown. All right, back in the oven they go? Yes, they're gonna go in for another 10 to 18 minutes to brown that second side. And we're using the very lowest rack of the oven because then the fries are right up against the heating element. Makes sense. My goodness. That is quite a transformation. Right, don't they smell great? They smell amazing. It went from really weird looking to really amazing looking. You wouldn't know they had looked weird earlier, right? <laughs> so first things first, we're gonna season them. Just like with all fries, you wanna get the salt on while the potatoes are hot. I've got a half a teaspoon of table salt here, and it might sound like a lot, but you'll notice a ton of this is sticking to the pan, so don't worry. I'm just gonna give them a quick toss. One of the things that makes French fries taste like fries is that salt, and we wanna make sure it's getting on early enough that it sticks. Boy, those fries really make a sound on that baking sheet. They sound crisp. They are. These are the most beautiful oven fries I've ever seen. Oh, thanks. So let's get these off. We wanna make sure they're blotted so they're not greasy. I'm just gonna give them a quick little tap. And get rid of this paper. So, you ready for fries? <laughs> Am I ready for fries? I see you have some ketchup here. Oh, I am all about the condiments. Oh, are you? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mmm. It has such a crisp exterior. Tastes mm. like fries, right? It tastes like a fry. You can see that nice creamy interior. That's hard to get on any fry, much less an oven fry. I mean, look at this. That's a gorgeous fry, no matter what kind of fry it is, much less that it came out of an oven with only three tablespoons of oil. Lon, these are oven fry perfection. So if you wanna make the ultimate oven fries, start with a rimmed baking sheet and spray it with cooking spray, then vegetable oil. Cut Yukon gold potatoes into evenly thick planks, and make a cornstarch slurry by cooking water and cornstarch together in the microwave. After tossing the fries with the slurry and arranging them on the baking sheet, roast them on the lowest rack of a 425 degree oven, covering them with foil at the beginning and flipping them over partway through cooking. And don't forget to season them with salt while they're still hot. From America's Test Kitchen to your kitchen, killer recipe for thick cut oven fries. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.